gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're going to move on into the empirical formula. This is part two of the moles lecture, which is lecture 12. The empirical formula is what happens when we determine the formula by the percentage of its components. The empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound, and the molecular formula is the actual ratio of elements in a compound. Sometimes they can be the same, sometimes they can be different. For example, CH2 is empirical. C2H4 is a molecular formula of that empirical formula. C3H6 is another molecular formula that still has the empirical CH2. H2O, however, is both empirical and molecular. Remember, you're just finding the lowest whole number ratios of the atoms in a compound. It's like finding the lowest common denominator. On the examples on this slide, C6H12O6 has an empirical formula of CH2O. However, CH4N2 is both the empirical and molecular formula. It's not just the ratio of the atoms, but it's also the ratio of the moles of these atoms, and that becomes important when you are calculating the empirical formula. So let's take a look at this one. We're going to calculate the empirical formula of a compound composed of 38.67% carbon, 16.22% hydrogen, and 46.11% nitrogen. And you always assume that it's 100 grams unless you're told otherwise. So first thing we're going to do is take that percentage of carbon, turn that into grams. So 38.67% is the same as 38.67 grams when you're assuming 100 grams. Then we multiply it by the moles of carbon and the molecular weight, so we get 3.220 moles of carbon. Now let's do that with hydrogen. We get 16.1 moles of hydrogen and 3.220 moles of nitrogen. So if you see here, the 3.22 is the same for carbon and nitrogen. That's going to be important. So when we do the empirical formula for this, um, we would say C1 H4, N1. So CH4N is the empirical formula for this. Let's take a look at this one. Let's calculate the empirical formula of a compound composed of, um, I'm sorry, CH5N blue. Sorry, brain fart. So we have one mole of carbon to one mole of nitrogen, what, five moles of hydrogen to one mole of nitrogen, so that's CH5N, not CH4. Um, I had a brain fart. I apologize for that. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Caffeine is 49.48% carbon, 5.15% hydrogen, 28.87% nitrogen, and 16.49% oxygen. So what is its empirical formula? Well, we again assume 100 grams, so those percentages just become grams. Then we multiply it by the molar weights. So we get 4.120 moles of carbon, 5.099 moles of hydrogen, 2.061 moles of nitrogen, and 1.031 moles of oxygen. So what we do is we find the lowest whole number ratio by dividing everything by the smallest number of moles. So in this case, it's going to be the moles of oxygen because you want whole number multiples. So we take that carbon and we divide it by the moles of oxygen and we get um, 9. Hydrogen to the oxygen gives us 5, and nitrogen to the oxygen gives us 2. So our empirical formula is C4H5N2O. Okay, let's take a look at this one. A compound has empirical formula of ClCH2 and a molar mass of 98.96 grams per mole. What is its molecular formula? So here, we're not actually assuming any mass. You want to find the actual molar mass by the mass of one mole of the empirical formula. So you'll get a whole number, and then you multiply the empirical formula by that number to get the molecular formula. So we'd say, OK, well, it's got 98.96 grams per mole. And we know that one mole of chlorine, it, it, the molar mass is one mole of chlorine plus one mole of carbon plus two moles of hydrogen because it, we've given you the formula, C, ClCH2. So that gives us a total of 49.48 grams um, for one mole of this compound. 
So we take that 49.48 grams divided into 98.96, and that gives us 2. So we multiply that times the empirical formula, and we get Cl2C2H4 as the molecular formula. Again, this is material that you really, really, really need to, comp um, to comprehend by doing. So make sure that you're doing the activity that follows this. It's located on the Moodle site. It's a worksheet. It will take you some time. But make sure that you are taking that time because it's going to be super vital important to not only this semester, but next semester's material as well. Okay, let's try a different tactic, and we're going to go from percents to the molecular formula. So we have ibuprofen, 75.69% carbon, 8.8% hydrogen, and 15.51% oxygen. It has a molar mass of about 207 grams per mole. So I've given you the mass. We don't have to assume. So what you do is you take the percent and multiply it by the molar mass. And this is going to give you the mass in one mole of the compound. So we're going to do that here. So we've done that, and now we're going to change those masses to moles. So we're going to take those numbers and put them over here times the molar mass. So that gives us 13 moles of carbon, 18 moles of hydrogen, and 2 moles of oxygen. So we're going to change this into the subscripts. So that's C13H18O2 for the molecular compound. So I know I've kind of gone fast through this, so make sure that you are practicing the materials on the additional worksheet that goes with this lecture. I can't emphasize that enough. That's why I'm saying it again. Um, make sure that you can do these questions um, because it is, again, vital to your understanding for the rest of chemistry for the whole year. So if you have any questions, by all means, see me during office hours or check with me by email, and I'll be happy to help you out. Have a fantastic day.